of what that war is, perhaps we can better deal with the decisions when they come. And so that is why I'm discussing cognitive dissonance. <clears throat> if, there, if there is an uh, inconsistency uh, created in your mind between one belief and another, between one uh, behavior and another, that inconsistency causes you some uh, commotion, you know, in your in your spirit, in your body. Uh, you may you may feel panicky. You may feel unstable. You may um, you may feel uncomfortable, a little squeamish. You may have uh, some uh, avoidance issues. You know, a lot of us want to avoid conflict, so we say in the name of avoiding conflict, we'll just go along to get along. That is one phrase that just really bothers me. Go, go along to get along. Because it, we're get along, getting along with whom? Right? And we know that these this is only temporary. We need to remind ourselves daily that we are here only on a temporary basis. This is not our home. In fact, our bodies are only our t temporary dwelling. But in such, we, if we are in relationship with Christ and he dwells within us and he has, as uh, said in scripture, our bodies, we, are, we, we, we hold the temple. We are the temple. And so if, if in your body is this good part and then there's this, quote, bad part, and they're warring, anything that causes a uh, disturbance in your, within your body, within your mind about your behaviors is obviously going to manifest in many different ways. Uh, for some people, it goes to full-blown, uh, you know, depression. For some other people, they start to just rationalize their behaviors and they rationalize it to the point that they then go along with what the world has said. Uh, some people, uh, uh, particularly leadership, uh, a lot of leaders, they may not say it specifically, but their actions say, do as I say, not as I do. That has been just utterly prevalent in the last few weeks of, uh, of the news, if you've been paying attention to any of that. Uh, you know, we have rules for some people and no rules for the other people. And all of this causes in our bodies, in our minds, in our spirit, disturbance. Well, psychologists know that ultimately we want to, we want to uh, calm that disturbance. We want to try to l eliminate the disturbance. We want to minimize the disturbance or the feeling of being uncomfortable so we make choices. We may, now that that commercial has brought to our attention that, oh, we're not maybe the best uh, person by using, by not using their dish soap. Well, you know, that just kind of weighs on your subconscious, right? Now, you may not think it does, but then why do you go to the store and then ultimately buy the other dish soap that was in the advertisement? Or, you know, you find yourself um, it, it happens very subtly too. You might find yourself actually singing a jingle that you heard in a commercial, not even realizing how it had been, you know, really affected you and implanted in your mind. You may pass by a, um, a billboard and, you know, you, you, if you're driving down the road, you may, there are several billboards all over the place. You may see one, you know, several miles back about chicken, right? And then, Later, the next day, you find yourself going and buying chicken. Was that a result of some subliminal message that you got? You know, by way of the commercial, by way of, you know, you can't even go to the movies now, if you can go to the movies, <laughs> um, uh, without all of the advertisements, previews. You can't watch your uh, your tablet or your TV or... Uh, get on the computer or your phone without having advertisements, which they say, of course, are for your your um, your benefit. They they want to tailor and customize your electronic 
uh, inner interactions with your devices. They want to make it, you know, much better for you. So they track everything. You go to one website and you look at uh, a table. And all of a sudden, now you see tables popping up advertisements all over your devices. But this, of course, is for your benefit, mind you. But all of those things are a way to create some kind of, some level of inconsistency, therefore uh, disturbance, therefore uh, a sense of being uncomfortable, ill at ease. So they create that within you, and then you, uh, at some point, make a decision to try to reduce that feeling of discomfort. Okay, and I mentioned too that, um, <laughs> you know, we tend to we tend to think of discomfort always in the negative. And I mentioned last evening that actually some discomfort is good. Like for instance, if you have a tummy ache or a headache, it might help you to. Uh, realize that maybe you need to drink more water or you need to eat because you hadn't been eating all day or, you know, there'd be, uh, so some of that discomfort can be a good thing. And we tend to focus so much on feeling good. That's another thing that society, that the world, you know, uh, imparts to us. Look good, feel good, and have good stuff. And if you don't look good, feel good, and have good stuff, then there's something wrong with you. You know, because up until you saw that commercial about the dish soap, you were just fine with the dish soap you had before. Right now, but now that they've introduced this idea that, oh, maybe you're not as good as you thought you were because you weren't using this particular dish soap, this new dish soap, or if you don't have, uh, you know, this new phone or that new pair of shoes or that handbag or this dress or that, you know, then you're not as good as the other people. Uh, and of course you want to be as good as the other people. You want to be in with the, the in crowd, the cool group, right? And if you think this just affects uh, teenagers and children, no, it did not stop when you stop settling when you turned 18. Okay. So there's another thing that they focus on, which is um, the fear of missing out. We call it FOMO. F-O-M-O. Fear of missing out. So many of your advertisements are targeted on making you feel like you're the only person that doesn't have XYZ. Oh, everybody's doing it. Everybody's got the new BMW, everybody's got, you know, this laptop and that laptop and a tablet and a phone and a this and a that and, you know, everybody, to be successful, this is what you must have. So it sets, it sets up this notion in your mind of some sort of inconsistency, an inconsistency in the way you believe or perceive yourself to be, you know, I was once great for seeing that commercial, now I'm not feeling so great. So how do I make my feeling of discomfort go away? I do the thing that's been suggested to me. All right, so I hope uh, you kind of get the idea. So if that is happening, just on, you know, with regards to something like dish soap, we know that it happens with our other behaviors. In fact, I mean, just by our conversation um, in the previous two episodes regarding the Sabbath, for example. Um, I have been suggesting that the Sabbath uh, is the seventh day, which would be Saturday. And many, many of us for years and years and years have been taught that the Sabbath is Sunday, or that's what the day that we, you know, have gone and worship to our churches or etc., going completely away from what the Bible says. But, in order to be in the in crowd, 
in the in group to go along to get along we continue to go against the word of god because there as i pointed out in the weeks previous there is no scripture anywhere in the bible that changed the sabbath from the seventh day to the first day so uh, we also talked about, of course, that if we want to please God, we would then do what? Do the things that God asks. So let's look at some of those scriptures. Um, and I think that we did talk about um, some of these before. So as I said, I was not going to um, not going to list them again uh, in the preview, but I'll list them here. Uh, first of all, let's talk about let's talk about. Again, what Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my commandments, right? So where did we find that? That was first, I think, in Matthew. Uh, remember how we looked at Matthew um, chapters 5, 6, and 7. So let's go now to Matthew 6. Matthew chapter 6. And as an overarching thought for the moment, let's look at verses 33 and 34. And this is what we all say we want. So let's start here. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore, take no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall, excuse me, I lost, I lost my place. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself, sufficient unto that day. So don't, wor don't be worried about the things of tomorrow. Because God has already provided. Now here is where some of our concern is when we think about making decisions based on fear. Are we buying things, doing things based on the fear about not having enough? Do we not, do we refrain from giving to others? Because we fear we won't have enough. In verse 25 of the same chapter, he says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment? And he gives a good example, followed up in verse 26. The fowls of the air, they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are ye not much better than they? Fear. Talks about worry in the next, in the next uh, verse. In verse 27, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit to his stature? In other words, by worrying about your height, can you change it? <laughs> I mean, that's kind of the example here, right? Worrying about, well, uh, I, I'm not as pretty as the other person. Um, my hair is not like their hair. Um, I'm fat, they're skinny. Uh, they have, you know, this and I don't have it. Worrying about that, will it, will it, does it change it? Focusing on the fear of, uh, as I said a few moments ago, FOMO, feeling left out. You know, so we want to be in the in crowd. We want to be accepted. 
and and 